everyone? It's Adriana here and I'm here with another video and I'm gonna be discussing Bob Iger's book The Ride of a Lifetime because I just read it and, and I actually really liked it. It's gonna be kind of a review but also just kind of the things I took away from the book because I find it very very interesting but it's also a leadership book so he does give like a lot of things that I feel like are very applicable to life you know. So I'm gonna give my thoughts on that and like what I've learned. If you guys don't know Bob Iger he's the CEO for the Walt Disney Company so if you guys are interested in Disney definitely read this book but also just like in business. I'll get into it a little bit more because I have like opinions about like the acquisitions and stuff I didn't grow up with Disney. I went to Disneyland once as a child I definitely got more into the whole Disney and like trivia and knowing who everyone was in 2015 when I got my Disneyland pass Because then I was like I love this place. I will learn everything I can about Disney I didn't grow up knowing about like some of these people like I knew of them like I knew of Eisner Like I never knew the depth of their part in the company. Just letting you guys know I think Bob Iger is great and I love the book. That's my opinions as of right now so let's get into talking about the book. So this book gave me an existential crisis or midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, I don't know. I turned 27 in four months, so yay. Basically, I feel like his career path was like my dream career path. I have my bachelor's in communications with an emphasis in journalism, and then I have my master's in public relations. Like his whole career would have been like my dream career. And it's funny because I was already having like an issue about this because I feel like I wasn't as persistent with my career. Right now I'm just still freelancing as a writer, but like I'm not persistently pursuing it I'm stressing myself out because I read his persistency and how like he pushed for like his positions and I was like why am I not like that so I was having like a little breakdown because I was like he's accomplished so much and I feel like I haven't pushed enough to get to that point in my career so it made me a little sad I'm not gonna lie so if you're watching this Bob Iger hire me I will literally be anyone's assistant and work my way up I will push for this job or put me in a Marvel movie that's okay with me too in that aspect I did enjoy reading his book because I was like dang this is kind of like what I would have wanted for my life to turn out. I always wanted to be a journalist but I always thought I would be like writing for like a newspaper or something and it wasn't until like the end of junior year of my undergrad that I was like I love broadcast but at that point it was just way too late to switch and then I was just kind of like over it so I was like I'm just gonna stick with this. I would have loved to done broadcast and just like move from the broadcast and creating part of the industry to like the business side of industry which is why I'm saying that his career path was like my dream career path because he was like doing like the production stuff and then moved into the business side of stuff. So that was my dream job so maybe I'll find a way to make that work eventually in my life. I need to pursue my career a little more passionately now but yeah if you're watching this Bob Iger just hire me. I'll be working hard. So now back to the book. I did get the ebook version of the book and I regret it now. I would have gotten the physical copy but you know everyone makes mistakes. Everyone has those days. So I did get the ebook version and I actually read it in like a few days. I feel like I was very interested in what was going on so like I wanted to keep reading which is a good thing about a book. You wanted to get you hooked. Christine whose channel is Ivy Winter she has a whole live stream about this book. She's doing a book club and this is the book that they're currently reading. So I was watching it. She did point out something that I do agree with which is that his writing's a little bit dry which isn't a bad thing because I feel like there is a lot of details that you kind of have to follow along with. So in a way I did appreciate that that it was kind of straight to a point but I do understand that at some point he's just stating things. You know that's kind of the, his writing is very very simple dry to the point. I don't know if this counts as spoilers because a lot of this stuff happened and you can read about it anywhere in the news but I guess it's since it's from his perspective it might be spoilery I don't know so the prologue does start with the pool shooting and the alligator attack over at Disney World basically when he was in China this all happened when Shanghai Disneyland was opening I feel like that was just like a, such a strong way to start off the book because it immediately got you hooked and you can kind of see like the pressure he has as like a CEO like there's so much always happening within Disney that he has to like handle and have his hand in and he has to just kind of keep pushing through and just making sure everything works out well one of the things that did stood out to me was when one of the officials told him that in his speech when he was opening Shanghai Disneyland to like not mention the shooting which I understand like that makes sense it's supposed to be like a big moment Shanghai Disneyland is opening so they want people to be like happy it makes sense like why they would ask him to do that but like you understand how hard it is he's dealing with this really like big moment that's supposed to be really happy and cheerful and like something so tragic happened it's like one of those things that you know he's handling and you know that he has to handle but like you don't really think about how he's making it through see I won't give too much about the prologue because I think it's very interesting there's a lot of details that you might not have known and that was just such a great way to start off the book because then I just got hooked and I was like okay I want to read more about it he does say how it's not a memoir but I feel like at times it does feel kind of a bit like a memoir which I thought was fine because I feel like it's really important to know about a person especially him because he's the CEO of Walt Disney Company like that's a big deal so I didn't mind hearing about 
like the details about his life because I feel like it just added more I guess his credibility in his position so I really enjoyed that the first part of the book was like the learning part of his life which I thought was just really really helpful to see like where he started and how like he worked his way up something that he said that I will like apply to my life is the fact that he always just said yes to things even if he like didn't know what to do he would get that experience and just make it work and I feel like that's something like super important is just like learning to say yes to like opportunities because if it doesn't work out at the end then it doesn't work out but at least you'll know I feel like it's something that I always knew but now that I'm like clicking it together I was like okay that makes sense I will definitely try to do that more so the first part of the book still does talk a lot about like his beginnings of ABC but it does talk about how Capital City's ABC was bought by Disney but I think like for me like the most interesting parts was like seeing the tension at Disney like with Michael Eisner and just him being CEO and like just people really not liking him because I feel like that's like the thing that I know for sure is that I always know that a lot of people don't like Michael Eisner so I know that I've built my opinion from that because a lot of people are always like he's a worse so now I'm like I don't think he's great so reading the book yeah he was not that great hearing his experience with him you can see that this guy was struggling I really appreciate that he was like really honest with that part I feel like a lot of people knew about like the tension with, like Michael Eisner and like the board and just like the general public so hearing him talk about it I think was really interesting just because he lived it and he has his experience about it it was definitely like interesting to read just hearing his opinion of like being there and just having people fighting all the time but then it was like really interesting seeing once he realized that like the position will be open him trying to become CEO he had to like fight for that job I know that Eisner made mistakes but hearing Iger write about his last day as CEO it made me really sad it made me feel bad for him like he didn't even finish his full term so yeah I know he made mistakes but that made me feel bad for him so the first part of the book does end with him trying to be CEO and show how he can run Disney and just look to the future so if you guys didn't know he gets the job what a spoiler so the second part of the book does lead more into like the leadership type of stuff because it's like his whole running Disney basically at that point so I feel like I have more to say about this part because I found like everything really really interesting I feel like he's a perfect example of like putting what he learned before into practice something I really really liked is the fact that he was always kind of looking forward and being like a visionary I feel like this is why I think he's like really great was the fact that he took on that position media isn't how it is today but yet he kind of had like the insight of like it's gonna evolve and we have to evolve with it he does say like innovate or die which is what his one of his old bosses told him and I just thought that was like brilliant again I'm gonna get into it with the acquisition stuff like he brought Disney to what it is now because he had like the insight for that everything's changing so fast and if you're not changing with it you're gonna be done especially for a company like Disney like they have to be like innovative they have to stay on top so I definitely feel like he helped lead the way into what they are now because when he started Disney didn't own the things they have now so he was smart he knew where the wind was going or blowing so again like I didn't grow up knowing about like Disney and the company in that way so like everything was kind of like I knew of but hearing him saying that I was like okay that makes sense so one of the things he first did was pitch to buy Pixar again for me like I was just assumed there was like a partnership there and then it just happened I will go through each acquisition because I feel like I have something interesting to say about each thing but one of the things I really liked about like the Pixar stuff was that he had to like gain Steve Jobs respect and he actually really did gain it started off small to build that trust to eventually get to that point and something I will say now people are always like Disney's buying everything they're gonna control everything from the way he explains it someone was always gonna buy one of these companies if it wasn't Disney someone else would have bought them I guess also my bias that I love Disney I'm glad that Disney has them hearing about Steve Jobs was also very interesting because again like we have like this idea of Steve Jobs so hearing him talk about him as like a friendship point and as a business partner point like I thought it was really interesting I just appreciate knowing that Steve Jobs hated cheap things because same but thankfully Disney now owns Pixar so one of the things I really love was the whole Marvel acquisition part as well you see Marvel now and you see his grandioseness you see Endgame and it's beating box office records like you see it as this big thing that is now but obviously it wasn't like that always Disney helped bring that greatness to life because right now we see like Marvel and we think it's like super powerful brand but obviously it needed help I thought that was great that like Bob Iger was like hey let's buy Marvel I feel like the Star Wars acquisition was the hardest chapter for me to read because I feel like I just worm through the whole thing. I do appreciate that Bob Iger was very honest with this whole section because you have George Lucas who poured his heart out to Star Wars. It's his child. Like he created this whole world. I feel like I was very intrigued about this chapter but like I was just like cringing this whole time. Them having to tell him that like it wasn't a Pixar deal so they would have to give him less money. Hearing how they didn't use George Lucas's ideas for the new movies and just how disappointed he was. I was just like oh my gosh. Like that's hard to read. I feel like you feel for George 
George Lucas. I guess like this whole book helps me to understand where Disney's coming from because it's just so easy to just be like, they're ruining everything, but like you know where they're coming from. I think the Star Wars thing has the most kind of negative thoughts towards Disney because a lot of people think they ruined them. I do see both sides. I think it's hard for George Lucas because it's his child and he's just selling it to Disney and they can do whatever they want basically. And again, it could have been sold to someone else. I'm glad it was Disney though. Poor George Lucas. Someone go give him a hug. I feel like the Star Wars and Disney thing has the most kind of opinions because there's like the diehard Star Wars fans that just think Disney ruined them and then there's the other side who just really actually enjoyed them. So let me know what your thoughts are on Disney Star Wars partnership because I would love to know what you guys think about that. So the book does like end kind of where Disney is now. He talks a lot about like having to move forward with like Disney Plus and having like this streaming service and like why that needed to happen. Again, it's really great that he had like the hindsight for that. Like he knew that Disney had to move forward and innovate in that way. And it's paying off because I know for sure that I'll probably be watching Disney Plus a lot more than watching Netflix. So, like you understand where he's coming from and like having those ideas and moving forward with them. Like it's a good thing. Like he had the vision for that. Again, if you're really into business, one of the things I liked about the book is explaining kind of what it is when you buy a company. Because he was talking about how like they were going to buy Twitter but then ended up not buying it just because he knew that he would have to deal with like what comes with Twitter. Like banning people for the things they say, the liabilities in that. I personally think that was a smart choice. I hate Twitter. <laughs> I use Twitter a lot but yeah like Twitter is insane. With any of the acquisitions like it's more than just buying a company and be like okay we're done like we bought them out. You have to deal with kind of everything that comes with it which is something he does point out. You don't want to just take what they have and just be like okay now you're ours and we're doing this way. You're buying the company for what they do and their strengths. But the Fox acquisition was kind of my favorite thing to read about just because I feel like it's also super recent. And hearing his perspective was very very interesting because again this is what I've been saying. If it wasn't Disney buying it someone else was gonna buy it. Again people are always complaining of like Disney's buying everything now they own everything. He explains the things that they couldn't buy from Fox. The FCC like has some regulations about this. How much companies can own about certain things. So they don't own everything which is what people just assume. There was just so much to it that was very interesting to read about. That also means that Disney that holds the rights to Fantastic Four which is what I wanted. But definitely I enjoyed this book. I do feel that he shied away from some things. Like I feel like he, there was parts that he would have mentioned a situation but really wouldn't dive deep into the situation. But again I'm pretty sure that he can't. He's still running the company so pretty sure he can't just say certain things at this point. So if he read to part two after he's done being CEO I would 100% read it. So I definitely enjoyed his book from a leadership perspective. One of the things that obviously I took away was the whole innovate or die. You have to keep going and kind of growing and one of the things he did say is how he had to like disrupt like what they currently were good at and like what Disney currently was to keep growing and expanding. We just get so stuck on like the things that we know. Even if it's been working like we stick with them but we don't realize the ties will always be changing. Especially reading how he did that with the company because again like the company grew so much in his time being CEO. He's obviously doing something right which is again like one of the reasons I like this book was that he's teaching you like leadership things but he's also showing you how he did them because I feel like sometimes people just throw out these things and they're like yeah this is a leadership tip and then you're like I don't know how to apply this. Like so many people want Disney to be like how Walt wanted it but when Walt started this company it's always gonna be a hundred years. Things are very drastically different than they were then. Things are never gonna be the exact same way like they have to grow and change. Disney definitely has it hard because people have such an emotional connection to it but it still has to keep growing and changing to keep reaching new audiences. I understand both sides like if I love something and have an emotional connection to it I don't want it to change but I also have to have a common sense that like it has to. I'm one of those people that loves Mission Breakout more than Tower of Terror because I have no emotional connection to Tower of Terror but I love Guardians of the Galaxy and I went on the ride and it's a great ride. <laughs> That's not about the book. But you know, I think one of the things that I also really appreciate about him, again, I don't know the guy, I'm basing it off of the book, but I do really appreciate that he kind of takes like a humble approach to like everything. Like he doesn't want to just be like, I'm the CEO and this is how we're doing things. Very much take in mind the people around him and just making sure that he's listening to different opinions and making the, the best choice for everyone. So that's a very important lesson to learn that like no matter what position you're at, you should just keep everyone in mind. Make sure that you're listening to new ideas and make sure you're bringing up those ideas. I also didn't mention this but he was responsible for putting Twin Peaks on TV so I thought it was really interesting to know. At the end of the book he does have like an appendix of more like detailed little tips that he gives. So one of the things I liked is that he said that like excellence and fairness are mutually exclusive. Something like I feel like I apply to my life in general is be unoffendable because if you want something good sometimes you have to make hard decisions. It's about the bigger picture. <laughs> Going back to Disney it's a big company they have to make hard decisions and sometimes they have to push for 
for the better thing. I definitely think that Bob Iger shows how to be like a good leader. I feel like he comes from a place of being like very self-aware of like the position he has, the people around him. But I think like overall, I enjoyed the leadership aspects from this book. Like let's be honest, like the company grew so much under his leadership. He's obviously doing something right. I mean, people still love Disney. I mean, you can go on Twitter and see how many people are super excited for like Disney+. Plus. I was definitely one of those people who was online trying to get a reservation for Galaxy Z. So I think that's why I really like this book was because I feel like you can tell that he's putting these things into practice. I think he was very honest for the most part in his book about like certain things. How it would wrap up the book is have vision. If you have a clear vision of where you're going, you can figure out how to get there. So that's my thoughts on the book. I actually really liked it. I thought it was great. I like told a lot of people to read it. If you're like into Disney, it's a good book to read about like the Disney side of things. But it's a, also a very good leadership book to learn and just apply if you're leading people. I feel like Bob Iger has done like a lot of cool things that he just like drops in in the book and I'm just like cool. So for me definitely the Star Wars chapter and the Fox chapter were kind of my favorite just to read about and just how that happened. Like a lot of people need to under also understand that like it's not like that Disney's just like I'm gonna buy you and like buys them. There has to be an agreement from both sides. It's not like the company was just like oh my gosh Disney bought us. Guys there's more to it. So let me know if you guys have read this book or if you guys are interested in reading it. Again it's called The Ride of a Lifetime which I think is like the most clever name ever because again he runs Disney. So let me know what you guys thought if you guys are reading it or if you guys want to read it now. Let me know what you guys think. It definitely has like a lot of like details that are good facts to know that like I would just drop in conversation for now on. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And hire me Disney. I would be such a great addition to your company. Let me know any fun Disney things that you have to say down below. Let me know your thoughts on Disney in general. Do you guys think that they're taking over? Do you guys like the company? Let me know all those type of thoughts down below. I'll see you guys in a different video. Bye!